we are seeing it in, in Ukraine and in the battlefield there. Um, I think one of the things that we are identifying is that these small UASs are really kind of changing the battle space in terms of how the battle is fought in Ukraine, looking at it from an education standpoint and seeing how is this going to affect the future battlefield. The capabilities exist today for the threat today. They're out there, they're deployed, and, and we've been working closely with our Army customer to continue to mature and evolve that capability to stay ahead of that threat. The next step which needs to occur is really integrating kind of the counter UAS systems that exist today into kind of the larger ground-based air defense architecture. Because counter UAS is really a small piece of the ground-based air defense mission set. If you integrate, say, LIDS as part of NASIAMS and Patriot, now you have a layered defense uh, to go after the longer range threats, the mid range threats, as well as the, the smaller short range threats. We have a radar that's integrated with Northrop Grumman's FAD C2 command and control system. And then you have an effector that's integrated with that command and control system as well. And so when the, the radar essentially detects and identifies that it's a threat, then you command launch the effector uh, to go to combat that threat. And so it takes cues from, from the curse radar, gets close enough to get into terminal range where the seeker takes over, and then essentially neutralizes or, or destroys the threat. We have allies out there that have Patriot. We have allies out there that have NASAMs. Uh, but we also have allies that have other systems. And so how do you truly develop or create this layered defense or layered ground-based air defense? And it adds to that complexity if, if they don't have U.S. systems. And so, you know, we are working with them. We're working in concert with U.S. Army uh, to provide them counter U.S. capabilities as well. This technology and this capability is being used and proliferated worldwide before we've seen attacks in the Middle East. And we're, we're seeing them used uh, being used prevalently in, in the war in Ukraine. And we receive that information, we digest it, we really look at it and, and analyze the, the data and the information in terms of how it's being used and take that back to identify and develop roadmaps that we can incorporate to develop and mature our capabilities to stay ahead of this threat.